attention here. Now he knows where it is because he ain't us, right? He knows where it is, but he says like he did to Adam and Eve, where are you? Why are you hiding? What are you hiding? What have you done? So the Lord in his kindness today is calling us out. <laughs> He's calling us out. It's his kindness that leads us to repentance. He reveals stuff in us to heal us, not to shame us, not to condemn us, but to say, come, come daughter, come son, I got more for you. Get that stink out of your life because I've got something better for you. I, I got to tell you, whenever the word family is mentioned, it just, it melts me because I'm a family guy. I am blessed with an amazing family. There, and God hit me with a new definition, kind of like the one I gave you last week, but a little more serious. People that know you at your worst and still believe the best. The body of Christ is called to be the closest thing to perfect family as there is in the universe. We're a place where dysfunctional, sinning, uh, rebellious people come and find our true purpose and meaning. And it doesn't matter where we're from, what we look like, all those good things. We are accepted by our Father God through Jesus Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit. And that, there is a killer in the midst of your family and in the killer and in the midst of our church family at DC3 and all across America. And that killer's name is convenience. And guys, listen, there is unhealthy fear, but there is healthy fear. And the, right here we see that healthy fear. Be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Be inventions. I love inventions. I love my iPad. I love it, man. It, it, they give us more quality time with people we love, right? That's right. We're going to have... To do less, we're not going to have to scrub laundry on a washboard. How many are thankful for that? Because I think many conveniences are turning our homes into houses. Has church gotten so convenient that it's no longer a home but just a building? When the blessings become the object of our affections, now we have a problem. Friendships. In a day where if you wanted to talk to your friends, But there was an amazing amount of face-to-face -face conversations. There was an amazing amount of, you know, doing your thing and doing the surface level stuff. But at the end of the day, rather than going home and texting each other and social media about what you did tonight, you hung out somewhere late at night or after, you know, you're camping or you've been shopping together. And now you're having a, a snack or a coffee and you just talk and grow and love and figure it out.
Watch this, 2 Timothy 3. If you have your Bibles today, if you'll turn with me there in the NIV, 2 Timothy. And I love this first line, 2 Timothy 3. It will be on the screen if you would like to read it with us today, if you're online. He says, but mark this. Everybody say, mark it. You got to get ready. Put a, put a, drop a pin right there, baby. But mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be, say it, lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents. Any parents in the house? Let's keep going. Ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited. Now here comes, everybody ready for the mic drop or the booyah? Here we go. Everybody drum roll on your legs right now. Here we go. The word of God is speaking. Read it with me. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Now there's a difference between when you make God first in your life and God is the object of your affection. But there is a subtle thing that happens with humans where we make our conveniences or those things that bring us pleasure the object of our affection. Having a form of godliness but denying its power. Read it. Have nothing to do with those people. Now, what is convenience? Convenience is the state of being able to proceed with something with little effort or difficulty. Matthew 16, 24. Now watch this, family, loving family, joy-filled family. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. He goes on in verse 25 to say, for whoever wants to save their life will do what? Lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world? Here we go again. Yet forfeit their soul. Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? Take notes. Here we go. We're going to rapid fire. Number one, guys. If you don't get any other one, I want you to see this one because family matters and we need to love the world like Jesus loved the world. But loving like Jesus is always challenging and never convenient. Number two, God is calling the DC3 family to a greater culture of challenge. This is coming next week. Do not miss it. I'm just going to leave that one there. We have loving families are born out of challenge, not convenience. A couple of verses for you. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Does that Hebrews 10 says, let us consider how we may what? Spur. Anybody ever been around a rooster? I'm going total country today. Man, they will spur you. They got these big old spurs coming off their heel there. We are to spur one another to what? To hurt each other? No. Spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Number one, do a convenience check on your heart.